So my family was very big on, 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 on not watching restricted stuff. And I mean, if I even fast forward to after user user, like when DSTV could lock the age restricted shows, my family was those. They lock the shows. Um, I bo, it password. Lock the things. What's, what's, Hi guys and welcome to this episode of Bup Culture and at today we're going to be speaking about shows that are kind of like, um, not even kind of like they are, our version of coming of age um, programming that also um, I feel stems from trying to impact or you know give a message. So uh, the shows we're going to be talking about today are Iizo Iizo, e Home Affairs, E intersections. We have Cha Cha as well, and there's one. I'm, there's one I am Yo. forgetting. But yeah, yeah, guys. So I just want to hear Uguti. You know, in terms of character standout moments, like what are the things that you feel like the show was kind of? Um, how was it impactful in your life? What was the thing that you know really stood yeah. out to be like? Yabole, I will never get another thing like this. Without going into all the details like we did the last time, because I feel like people got the gist of the words. But Ninjani, how are you guys doing? Good. I'm feeling good, feeling positive. Um, and this isn't fake positivity. I saw someone else in the comments be like, I'm so glad my visa didn't do the fake positive. I'm genuinely feeling... Nah. <laughs> I'm tired though. I'm going to leave soon. Thanks. I think we're all perpetually Lord. exhausted. I, I don't actually think, like, I think people assume just because you're working from home, there is this leisure, there's this leisure to it. And there's this, um, I don't know, this, this comfort and, you know, at your own pace, own race. But I, I, I kind of feel like the at homeness for me has taken out the routine, which has really given me a jarring Thing that i've had to create my own routine right because i'm making my own yeah. rules i think i am a person of habit and that has been fucking me up for real like in w oh, the you know just roll out of bed and start working like stop um whereas before <laughs> it's okay shop i'm going to the study you know i'm gonna make it work now i'm like wait meeting in hotel five two <clears throat> yeah never turn on my camera <laughs> you know what i mean me. i don't have to turn on my camera anyway so i'm just like well so no. How are you feeling, noise wise? How I'm feeling is that my internet is fucking out. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Ugh. Anyway, how are you guys doing? um my answer to the question is i'm doing fine i'm doing okay um things could be better as usual ah, delicious things could be better but i think at the end of the day um i'm trying to create a balance between like i guess what one was saying of not being fake positive in terms of my spirit and my energy and what I give to the world and all the rest of it. I'm just trying to keep my energies up. And if it's down, it's on the ground. And like, that's just what it is. Like, stop pretending like there's no point. But I definitely am a lot more productive than I was a couple of weeks ago. Which I think is pretty, pretty, like, praise. <laughs> because it was a difficult time at the beginning. And now I've adjusted. Like, you know what I mean? I've adjusted and I'm doing, I'm doing really, really well. I'm doing really well. And so now take it away, uh, Bezos. Give me, like... A show that you're just like, Yabole, I, you know, out of the ones that I've mentioned. Was... Okay, okay, so I feel that just overall, I think South Africa is really good at doing shows that are learning focused. So shows that have a specific message. So when HIV and AIDS was a huge pandemic, Soul City was around. When violence in schools, Yizo Yizo was a thing. When, well, gender based violence, I feel like, has been a common thread throughout them all. But Home Affairs really, like, nailed that. Um, so I think we're really, really good at, at doing that kind of genre. Yizo Yizo for me, I, you know, I used to, I think we were all kids when Yizo Yizo came out. So I used to watch it. You know, when you're a kid and you think you're smart, I used to watch it pretending like I'm sleeping, getting yabuga. And it was just crazy 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 and i think like another thing with south african tv shows especially ones that are played on SBC one is that they've been really great at bringing the community together you know a show is really good when 
in that hour that the show is playing, the hood is silent. And then the minute the song goes up or the the the, the words at the end come up, the credits, suddenly Nomsindo, you know that everybody was watching that show. So that's and Yuzo Yuzo is one of those. There there are quite a few that are like that, but Yuzo Yuzo I think was probably one of the first major ones where whatever I can't even remember what time it used to play, but I know that all of a sudden it's silent outside and it looks shiny. It only it's only silent like in the AMs really. Yeah, I love the show. I think I rewatched a bit of it when I was old and I was like, it's quite like hectic, eh? It's very very violent. It's very. And I, I very actually didn't pick hectic. up on that as much when I was a kid, but um. It was very hectic. One scene that used to finish me it wasn't a hectic scene, but when Gunman washed his tattoo off. <laughs> you mean his grandmother washed it off? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oksala <laughs> it's a tattoo that had been there for the whole season. Yeah, <laughs> Gaza, I. And and, and 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 I mean, think about it. Like our parents and tattoos were not playing games. Like that is demonic things that is like those are like it's it's a no go like you've been possessed you've been taken like it's just and i and i and i cuz for me like when i grew up i never i never watched these or growing up but i knew its impact cuz whenever you go to school everybody's talking about it but i unfortunately was never the kid who was talking about it because i i'd watched it i come from a family that is very very strict when it came to um age restrictions um and so at the end of the day i was not old enough Hi, yeah so my family was very big on on on, on not watching industry stuff and i mean if i even fast forward to after user user like when dstv could lock the unrestricted shows my family was those they lock the shows um i bo you password lock the wait things. so when when they were kissing scenes were you the kid that's like having to hide your your eyes or what well, ne- not really, because I remember like, and I know that I'm I'm still going a little bit, but it was just like some shows, like whether it was Bold and the Beautiful or whatever, it was like there were just certain shows like that we just weren't allowed to to watch, especially because shows that played during dinner time. Um, when we're eating, we're eating, right? And the problem with me was that when I was little, little, like I used to like watch the TV and not eat, and my food gets cold. I used to fall asleep while eating as well, so it was just like my 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 family. I think when it came to TV time, they were very sure of like eat over there and then watch tv the eat and watch tv at the same time thing sometimes was not allowed so when it came to user user i only actually got to watching it when i was in varsity there was a platform called dc plus 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 and and i loved it because you had to to get onto the thing you had to upload something so to get in order to get you had to give and I loved it. And so you would find, Wootsie, there are 17 million versions of one show because everybody uploaded Grey's Anatomy just to get everything else that they wanted. A season of Don't Only or uh, I don't know, a couple of episodes of whatever. And then so inside Pagats and you're watching the whole thing. I love DC. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. So that's where I caught you. So you're on DC++. And I watched it with my friends. And because I remember, like I said, like to your point, going away, you would creep maybe like in the corner points just to see because i knew all the characters gunman chester papa action like all of the things but again it was because of the conversations that i used to have with my friends and the snippets that i might have stolen or whatever but watching it in my in my older years when i was in varsity it was hectic like it was hectic and like you're saying like in terms of the themes and the genres that were covered within the show i actually like in netflix if you're watching if you're listening please Holla at your peeps, at your girls. Put user user on Netflix if it's possible, even as a limited edition series. Because I would love to see it now. Because it's just, and if you think about it, I mean, oh, I was about to say Queen Moroga, Sophie Ndaba was on user user. A lot of people's careers, you know, started up, even not started up, but like they debuted through that platform as well. Yes, started up, yes. The thing for me, I think that stood out about user user was how they were able to get i don't want to say it's the new ones because they got our real lives as they were you know and i don't want to say it was everybody um because obviously i mean you still had your haves and your haves nots and you know whatever but like i feel like it got township culture at its rawest um and it's realist but i think there was still there were still so many beautiful moments in 
excuse me, in between, like, you know, whether it was love stories and things like that, there were still beautiful moments, but it, 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 it hit on, I think, very painful things, like, in, in the show, when I think about it, like, especially, I remember, um, and trigger warning to anyone who is watching, like, the, the rape scenes, like, it was tough, like, it's tough to watch, and it's, it's painful, painful, painful to watch, but I will say this, that it is, a classic both in in the show content and the ability to tell the story as raw and as real as it was and to have the reception from the people taking it in and enjoying it even when it was difficult to watch but also in terms of the soundtrack <laughs> um and i mean who i think his name is elijah um elijah was in the show uzola was in the show um i forgot now um who are the different like their real names Ubani? Uzola played the first Papa Action. Papa Action, yeah. The second Papa Action, I won't lie, though, was my favorite. Ubaba got your jacket. Hey, boo, please. <laughs> please. That's, I mean, Zola. Yeah, please. I love you. But. <laughs> Wait, didn't, wasn't the, wasn't, um. It was the, the other way around. It was the other way around. Chester. Wasn't he Chester? Wasn't he Chester? No. Doja Cat's Wait. dad was Chester. Chester. Dad, Doja Cat's no, dad ooh, was Chester. I love yeah. how we're calling him Doja Cat's dad <laughs> when he's had like a whole career before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but wait. Now that you're mentioning it, Uzo was Papa Action till the end points. Wasn't there was a first Papa Action? I think there was a Papa Action before him. There was. I enjoyed, I did enjoy him, but I mean, Zola solidified i guess pop action so the points, right. points so, so wait points. chester is doji cat's dad I just yes to and then who can men was someone else mm. i it mean i don't remember i don't way. remember much of um is or user because again i also never had the opportunity to like watch it when i was younger i think i caught glimpses and pieces singing dala as well um but there were iconic scenes and iconic like episodes that i definitely did watch that i feel we're like, damn. And I think it's one of the shows that for me one of the one of the shows I can remember in terms of like the photography. Like if you see it now and you see those pics of like oh, and I can see him in the pic there's this one classic photo of the two of them together. Yeah. So like those iconic like the pho the photography of it all for me I think was one thing that I think I consumed much more than I did the show. And I, it always makes me like it's nostalgic. You remember it. You it kind of gives you a bit of a feeling. No bomb production did a thing there. Bomb production did a thing in the heart. Like, like and and it's and I think it's just one of those things I guess uh, that to like you were saying, Uguti, it, it was new, it was different, it was raw, it was uncut, it was like, we're going to take the plunge and we're going to do it. And people's reception mm. was the fact that it was something that they, I think, had never seen before. Um, and, and again, the yeah. shows that, like, you know, we're going to talk about, I think, kind of do that. Like, I Home Affairs, beautiful great show oh, my face killed it. Brenda Molly's character yeah, will still oh, I will can't. still to the no Vatiswa Lacha's character please Vatiswa Brenda everybody showed the fuck up Ubuli. like that family alone for me everybody showed up <laughs> yeah. every single every episode that you saw them on you were like yes good this, this, yeah. this is acting there was this stress of them and the this. white girl Yes, good. I, I, I genuinely, I really, Netflix, if you're watching, another show that I feel <laughs> needs to, needs to be on, like, a platform where we can watch it over and over and over and over and over again. Because um, I think, for me, mm, I'm, I, maybe it might be a little controversial, I don't know. But I think some, Yabon Jenga, mind you, the way in which that we're consuming um, stories and so, especially on ETS TV and all their shows that start with a the something, um, it always feels like the it's it's Very visually similar. pleasing. It looks good, like it's HD definition. And sometimes I'm not all the way carried through in terms of the story, um, which I think yeah. some of these shows really kept you there for the entire season. You know, and I do obviously yeah, yeah, think yeah. that there's sometimes where things can dip and whatever, but I I think some of these shows really were like every, every episode I'm gripped 
what's the cliffhanger oh my god damn like yes. i need to see the next i need to binge this you know i need the next thing um yeah if we're segueing to like a home affairs for this moment whatever i just feel to your point i think the um, I feel like the industry also got a lot of flack for the quality aspect. So the HD and all of that. And I do think that the, there aren't that many people who have been able to strike the balance between the power of storytelling and then the visual representation in terms of the quality of the show, the production of the show outside of the actual script and the casting and the acting. Um, and I think, probably, I think over time, there was a little bit of the waiting on the other in terms of improving our look and feel. Sometimes I do feel that SABC hasn't caught up to where all the Adam Zanzi Magic shows are at, especially when it comes to like the comedy shows, which is very strange for me because if you think about shows like Home Affairs, they all played on SABC One. And I think from a quality point of view, for me at the time, storytelling was still very much like my main priority in terms of being able to follow. And like you said, the character of Vati Sandaka, honestly, honestly, honestly no brenda Ngoli, please come on like please like their performance they they in like they became those characters it was difficult yeah. to see them outside of that and they were they were exceptional like and i think that for me sometimes like when one thing dips i think if it's going to be a quality thing one thing that that era was able to do there was a balance of everything like the quality of the show was there the cinematography was cool um the storytelling was dope and like you were able to follow riveting stories that were telling real life experiences like real life stories that you can talk about amongst yourselves as friends either because you know somebody a family member and or whatever and i think that for me was just like it was too clean yeah do you think that people's viewing habits have changed now because i feel like with the with the different soapies all oh, the banbani the this this the that the, it's always like a drug story or like this crazy like this this um it almost feels like the we've we've fallen into a soapy culture where the stories of realistic but a little bit further from everyone's everyday reality whereas things like home affairs and yizo yizo are like punching you in the gut and you're seeing yourself for yourself um yeah i don't know i feel like we've fallen into this like alternate world i think at the end of the day people still want a dash of reality with a dash of fantasy which is what i think some of these shows strike a balance in we obviously might not in reality angas have a queen pin but drug lord you know but yeah i mean i'm sure we do but it's not everyone's everyday experience what you can relate to is the woman in charge, right? So what what she's doing might not be the thing that you know, but you've seen a manager that's female or, you know, you've seen a matriarch, you've seen a, you know, so those are the things I guess that you are resonating with rather than maybe the backstory of what um, it's premise. But I think also now, it's, I think more to what Bonga or to answer what Bonga's question, I feel like also there's a lot more to cater for. Um, because I think now that we've been exposed to different types of stories um, and different types of ways of telling those stories, I think I, from what I'm observing, I think that production houses, script writers um, are wanting to also, from what I'm seeing, the newer, the newer age script writers or storytellers, uh, screenwriters, sorry. Um, so if you're going to think of like people like Chase D, um, like I feel like those women are also doing a lot of more work of trying to bring us back to the richer stories, similarly to the, to the ones that we are talking to now. Um, but I do think that at the same time, we're trying to cater for a lot more different tastes. Um, we've been exposed. Like, and especially, I think, I think, again, also, we have to take into consideration that we're all grouped in terms of different access and different interests. Um, and the reality is, I think for, for a lot of us who even are going to be able to watch this episode, we, we have access. You have access to a laptop, you have access to the internet, you have access to Wi-Fi, or your data is able to stretch to watch an hour-long episode or whatever. Um, and so I think those are people who have access to a Netflix. We've seen what's happening abroad, who knows what's happening in other parts of, of, of either Africa. And so I think that production houses are getting a lot more closer to like, okay, cool, what is happening in the world and how do we tell those stories? I personally don't necessarily think that we've all the way improved, I think, on our comedy stories. But the stories, the, the dramas, 
those ones we know how to do well. But the, the more romantic comedies, the romance, the more fluff-like shows, I don't know that we, we've gotten a language around those and we've gotten like a personality. So I think the home affairs, the user users are so impactful because again, the people, the people writing them, and even if the people who are writing them are white, they have to go and source from the real people. Those are coming from real lived experiences and those are narrated from real people. We can, we can search from that pain. We can search from that real life rawness. Whereas I don't know, there's something about the romance and comedy space that doesn't always translate. But I do think that production houses are trying to push the envelope just in terms of, okay, cool, here is the set of what we're able to do, you know? So I do think, I don't know that our preference has changed. Well, it has changed then, I guess. Um, but I think even the audiences now, like us, I mean, I look at an SABC and, I mean, honestly, I sit down and I watch Generations with Usis and I'm like, what are you guys watching? Uh, to your point about comedy and romance, um, not necessarily romance, because, like, Angyazi, like, significant shows that I can uh, stand yeah, out uh, in. Romance is dead. Yeah, <laughs> well, in, in more than one way. Uh, but... <laughs> I, I haven't I don't really yeah, recall yeah. like shows we have that you know that we can be like yeah this is a romance show but in terms of comedy we have mm -hmm. examples we have is good is nice we have Uve Lapi we had we had really good we, comedy. Ha we have Nowadays, examples like... you know what I mean it says top la or what we have examples of how to do comedy might not be the best might not be the one that you love or you know family bonds like there are examples <laughs> of how to do like comedy you know i just i just think that we i don't know we haven't it hasn't such a shame excelled. Though, that it hasn't excelled it hasn't yeah, uh, it's such a shame that we haven't excelled at that because we're such a funny bunch honestly we are honestly. we're fucking hilarious <laughs> and you know and I, I just don't think that we have many examples that I, also mind you maybe I'm not in touch right now um and you, you know maybe in the comment yeah. section you can come down and be like I want SABC no SABC two three ETV corner E X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z but from the shows that I remember that you know people could still talk about past just watching the show I don't know that you know anybody's doing anything you know major like. Like, you know, oh, says Topla, Mazzino, I think Nomzamo, um, you know, that family kind of sitcom yeah, thing. Yeah. And also they feel very, what's the name? What There's a name, there's a name for, ah, uh, for this, the type of comedy. What is it called? Uh, no, 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 not sitcom, not comedy. No, the style, the style. Slapstick. 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 Mm. South Africans love to do slapstick. I can't stand it. That's all the Leon Schuster thing it drives me mad. But it works, yeah. and people enjoy it. it. And that's the pro that's the thing. That's the thing. They they're making comedy that sells, and the vast majority of people love that stuff. I unfortunately fall in the minority that can't stand it. So I just I'm watching it, and I'm just like, I do oh. feel like there 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 is an opportunity to. To dial up the different styles because if in the same way that we can we can speak about dramas and they can be different ways of doing a dramatic story because drama doesn't always have to be violence you know what i mean like so at the end of the day i feel like there's an opportunity at play for us to broaden the scope of the type of comedy that we put on tv so i don't know that slapstick has to be the thing it may be the thing that sells and it may be the thing that the majority love watching but Let's also, let's also maybe open up the conversation of, is that potentially because that's all the people have been exposed to? Because how do we, how, you know, so it's like we haven't even opened up more opportunities for other types of comedy to, to be at play. Because if you think about, like, let's say abroad, whether it's like a, a what's this thing, a blackish and insecure, others can pocket that content in, in, into, into some form of comedy. But it's not your one with that's going to have a studio audience that's cackling in the back, you know. So it's just like, I don't know that it always has to be one style and one type. And also I feel that production houses do have a responsibility, I think, to put people on. Put us on. Like, put us on to what is new. Don't just create to what the audience loves alone. Put us on to new things. Like, introduce us to new, to new genres or new ways of comedy. Sorry, get me that. But then, does that not lend itself to like a profit that they might not make it? So, it, if if well, they if they are making stuff that works, it it has to come down to a bottom line: whether people get paid, whether they can pay their bills, and whatever. So, taking a chance on yeah. a we, you know, like people don't. I I mean, I don't know. I'm not an industry person, but I don't. 
past SABC and DSTV, there aren't many options. So if you're going to want people to take a gamble, where are they gambling on? Because if SABC is going to say... I, 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 I do still, I, I do think that they, they I, I completely agree. No, 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 you're raising a valid point. No, you're raising a valid point because the reality is at the end of the day, these companies need to make money. And the reality somebody is... Needs to yeah. say, somebody needs to say yes and buy into the idea. So if SABC yeah. is saying, or DS is like, mm, I don't know, the, the shows that make numbers are shows like XYZ and I need that kind of thing. You know. No, look, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong on the business of 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 TV. I think the business of TV. Once again, like, I'm also not an industry person. But what I'm saying is, the feedback that I'm giving into this conversation is from the the consumer and the person who's watching on the outside. And I think what I'm saying is, I will not know what the business reality is in terms of how do you make money from this thing. But I think again, how do you guys then? Then that's the conversation for me that I'm like, how do you guys then create the industry that is that can propel an opportunity? For the ones that just may not make the money, where it is the ones you can give the gamble, and maybe well, I don't know, you give an okay wasabi an opportunity to create something. Maybe it may not be a thing that 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 that, that can be housed on TV, but maybe we pilot it on YouTube, because I think at the end of the day, I feel like it's a proof of concept, and I think it's something that we've, we've talked to in other in other lanes of conversations, just to say that you can test the proof of concept in different platforms. It doesn't have to be housed on TV. Maybe let's say you test it on YouTube, and if it does build an audience of interested and willing people then maybe you move it on to tv i don't know but like i think for me the point that i'm just making is how do you broaden the scope of even how tvs go from an idea on paper onto something that can live on a dstv and i don't know that i'm going that i am happy with an answer that says mm, it's not gonna make money mm, that's fine but we can't how are we then going to grow the industry if we are just making the, the stuff that makes money I think someone will argue and say that that's the job of Mzanti Bioscope because there's a lot of content on that channel. There's two channels, in fact. Loads of contact, content made by young people and it's all really low budget. So someone from DSTV, for example, will argue and say, that's the platform. Unfortunately, I'm not watching it. But like you said, Ngani, you said low budget. What are we going to do? I have created stuff for it. So if somebody I know is going to act or somebody I know has directed mm. something on it, I'll definitely watch it. But just as a channel that I go to and just consume like for free, definitely not something that I'm I... I'm not shooting um, again. And also, ETV, yeah. not going to lie, Ang Saibug your nag yeah also like, don't as, watch as, a, as a thing and maybe it is easy and maybe that's why it's easy for us to to speak the way that we're speaking because we don't watch tv and so i think we we have the opportunity to opt out like if i don't see it on tv i'm gonna go and get it elsewhere so i'm just gonna lo i'm not gonna watch tv and i'm gonna get it online but the truth of the matter is that is not the reality of the majority of the people in this country so I think for me, it's just, a, it's just, I think I just ask myself the questions because when I, when I look at social media and the people who are conversating within this pocket of people around programming and TV, and when I do get the opportunity to watch on TV, and I just don't know, whenever I do, because Sissy does watch TV, I sit with her and when I watch, I'm just like, outside of like the top 10 really strong shows, when it's like a scheme sum or whatever, everything else in between, and course, show. And Kosho. We've digressed heavily. <laughs> but it, is a, it was still a vital, juicy chat, nonetheless. I'm enjoying this conversation, but I still want to hear your thoughts about, like, the, the other shows. Okay, so Intersections, and we had a conversation about this on WhatsApp the other day. Uguti, we're happy that it's back, but I don't remember these episodes. Like, what the hell? This is a totally new show. I don't remember season two, but season one, I was like, I remember this, I remember this, but it felt like it was two seasons. Nothing. It didn't feel like it was one. Because that's the thing with the intersections, and it's, it's one thread. So I, when I was watching the episodes, I was like, oh, I thought this was somewhere else. But oh, okay, it's still part of the thread. Like like the choir master, you know, that story. Brand new show. I was like, oh, right. I remember this, but I don't remember it being connected to Ukel. Um, that was the sex worker, and then it went, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, wow, everything is intertwined." And Lessy story, Lessy guy, guy that used to be an actor but failed and was dating the white woman that was rich. I don't remember that. That that that, that narrative, I never remembered it at all. I was like, "Who is this?" 
and then they were in jail and Warren Masamola was the gangster in the jail. Yes! <laughs> I, will. I don't remember this show. Uh, it's like a brand new, brand new, which makes me wonder how much of like Home Affairs and like Yizo Yizo I actually remember as facts or that which parts I've added or mixed up with other shows because I Intersection is a new show. Whoa! But the one thing I will give Intersections though is is that there was that one like... Because I, I, haven't, I haven't done what you guys have done where you guys rewatched it now, like in the 2020. Um, so my, my recollection of it is still clearly the fake story that I've been telling myself all these years. But, but the one thing that stood out was how I remember thinking it was... I don't know if it was the end of season one or two or whatever, but just how essentially everyone was having sex with each other. Like, I remember sitting back and I don't, I don't remember if they did a map of whatever they did. But I just remember at the end where it was like tom 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 and it's just like oh the shock value of that show my god but uh, I, I, I think it was very good in terms of like the the things that people say like not people like the health practitioners and the way that they um program and you know inform us about HIV is that essentially you the, the your sexual partner is like you're having sex with everybody that they've had sex with you hear that you know that it's not the first time that you're hearing it when you're seeing it on tv translates to they might have only had sex with one other person that one other person has had sex with i the map really it's one too many it just the map and then them going back to the first story that Scary. they actually showed of the lady that was about to get married and then found out on the radio, HIV, and her being like, oh my God, what about me? Them, them juxtaposing that first scene to everybody that had been on the show literally was like... It got takes like you off of your seat. It really, it really was that like... And I think I think Tembi to 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 what you had raised. I think that's what I that's what I mean about the put on and just in terms of like it could be they could anyone could have easily made another soul bodies and another soul city. Because the traditional way of teaching us about sex and, and, and just how what you think you thought is not what it is, and like they could have easily made a very, very similar type style. And I feel like intersections, for me, I remember watching it. And not knowing that this is building on the next, on the next, on the next, on the next. And that I never knew that when I was watching it, that the education was happening as I was watching it. You know, because I feel like Soul City, I knew when I signed up for Soul City, never mind, I mean the Soul City, I mean, come on, please, classic. You're in the clinic, you know what's I know what's going on. Like, it's education, health, wellness, we get it. Like, HIV, all the things. Also, at the end of the, every episode, they did a whole, like, this is, call this line and whatever. So you knew it yeah, was, like, and that, and that programming. Was Whereas Intersections, for me, was a different type of learning. And if anything, it was the one that, that kind of made me feel like whatever it is that you're not paying attention to, that thing that you're so comfortable to do in your life, take a step back and think again. That person that you think that, oh, uh, I'm going to sleep with that one, think again. Because that person lives in the web of it all. And I think for me, when everything came into the, the culmination at the end, that for me was mind blowing. That was just like, what? But, but they also were introducing concepts that I think that we weren't speaking about at the time also, or hadn't seen um, on TV being portrayed also. So, and for okay. them to have their own individual episode to live and be a concept and to maybe live over like three episodes, I think was great. Like, because you had interracial relationships, you had um, mm -hmm. the the young teacher, um, you know, having a relationship with a, a students and that power kind of dynamic. All many things were happening, and you were just like, "Oh, never seen this before. Interesting, interesting." And it was never all of it was important. Nothing was less important than yeah. the other. It was all grave and like made to be like these are all things that are happening all the time everywhere um and it and it never felt like we're being so taboo and this is like oh my god you know it was all just nah cool we're laying it all on the table and just like watch it and whatever and so 
I, I yeah. think in that sense, I really enjoyed like watching it now. I was like, yeah, this was before Senzo no Jason, way before Senzo no Jason. <laughs> people are literally kissing and having sex. And, you know, I have a rule. I don't, you know, have, you know, sex on the first night. And I just like, you know, seeing gay love on screen, you know, some, you know, because one of the guys was just like, I don't have sex. I don't get into relationships, like blah, 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 whatever. Then he falls for a guy that was, you know, kind of doing or saying the same thing. And. I was like, yes, man. I, yes. What? Okay. This is way before, you know, Usain's or no Jason, which also co caused controversy and whatever. But, like, all I'm saying is, in, in the one season of a show, for them to have such range, I think, like I said before, you na you see it now and you're like, damn. Because when I was watching it back then, yeah. I, w I didn't know that they were introducing us and educating us to kind of the visibility and the representation of like everybody that's in the society at the time. And I think that that's the range for me that I, I think I guess I'm, I'm also looking for just in terms of the different shows that do play because relationships don't show up in the in the way that we that we talk about in different in different platforms. So I feel like range is definitely what I'm looking for, and and it's that depiction of changing times. I need the reflection of changing times because again, trying to kind of create nuclear families and this and that, it's just like, Betunana, please. South Africa is also a nation, like the majority, the yeah. single parenthood, single mothers is the thing. Like trying to paint the narrative, come on, please. Come on, the nuclear family story isn't the only thing. And again, it's the minority story in South Africa. So I think, again, I'm just trying. I, I, I'm, there, are mo there are definitely moments where I, am, I, I have my times. So I'm just like, I'm looking for more. And I, and I don't know who I'm, 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 I'm looking from. To your point, Bongega, because, again, I think it's unfair maybe to put it on production houses. Um, there are many people at play who create programs and shows that we get to learn and love. So I'm looking at all of those teams to just be like range between and Isaiah and more just from an edu just from like edutainment point of view like being able to be educated through entertainment where I can watch something and it's like shit I didn't actually think about that because that's not my reality in my relationship but those are things to consider those are things to think about as a single person oh shit wow that's oh my good you know just just to be able like I don't I don't, I don't know when last I watched something especially from like South African shows where I sat back and I was like Shit, okay. Hey. Hey. And I thought about my life and I reflected on where I'm at with me and my relationships or my friendships or my single dim and all the rest of it, you know. And like you watch things like Insecure and Insecure can do a good job of bringing out all those different nuances. And I don't only want to relate to Insecure because Insecure is not my truth at the end of the day. It's an American show. Yes, they've tried to create a universal approach in terms of that story, but I'm South African. And I want a South African nuance of being single in South Africa and being a woman, navigating that, you know. The thing with the thing with with Chacha and Gazlam, for example, is I remember them like I remember their names and I remember they that they were on TV and they were powerful, but I just don't remember the storyline. Mm. Gazlam was where we were introduced to that um light skinned guy, Lo. Chisa. Oh, that Chisa. Wasn't Chisa like a show? Chisa. Chisa. It had... Ooh, who was that guy? Who everybody used to love that guy. I'm sure Silly Matunzi had to have had an episode where one of the girls took that guy to his metric dance. <laughs> there was the guy who ended up... There was the guy who ended up in the wheelchair on Chisa. I bought Dugu Dugu, please. You know, if we didn't speak about... um these coming of age shows my other topic that i wanted to do was still like shows but variety shows so like iseli matunzi um pasela eastern mosaic uh, pasela babes what, what was i gonna say about pasela you don't have to have an opinion about pasela but in what <laughs> those kind of shows also give us that um, yeah, so sure. top billing was on for top billing, you know, like shows like that. Like, I don't necessarily feel yeah, like my Tetwinyan over the after the top of the years, it top billing, it being as a fun. <laughs> it got to a point where, honestly speaking, for me, it was not aspirational anymore. I was just like, there was something the about, was, yeah, the houses for me was still aspirational. No, yeah, no, the houses stayed the same, but the content. The content itself just never... There was something about top billing for me that was just like, 
one day when I'm a big girl, that's going to be me. Like, there was just something about that show. And over the years, and I don't know if that's because I caught up to almost kind of sort of get to that way to become that girl. So maybe that's why I didn't relate because I was starting to live the little elements of the of that thing. But I don't know, okay, man. Okay, Bola. Okay, Bola. Um, okay, top billing wasn't just about money. <gasps> But also, the thing with top billing is the quality stayed the same. I feel like they were filming on the exact same camera up until 2019. And I'm like, aren't we aspirational? Where's the HD? I don't understand. I, I, I honestly put that on SABC. SABC. Aye, 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 aye. Probably. But, but the thing is, even their uploads on YouTube... I even commented on one of their videos. They oh upload was a gosh, square. Yes. And then they would be, yeah. Why? It used to irritate me so much. I'm like, what the hell is going on? You guys are the worst. It used to drive me crazy. I'm just, SABC. I'm, not, I'm just like, yeah, SABC was chowing the money and not giving the money and doing the money in the right ways. I'm gag. There's no way. They couldn't have been. is generations. I beg yours? I'm saying, who said all of the generations? Nah, bruh, I feel like Generations doesn't make sense in this list. What? Well, how so? <laughs> how so? <laughs> Babes, I don't know, I feel like these are such like powerful shows that end, where Generations is a series, and series, I mean, it's a soapy, and soapies don't end. Angiban Pelamini, the legacy, Jenny Generations. I'm talking, I'm not talking about the legacy, no. I was gonna be like, because I'm thinking about the legacy, and let me tell you something. I catch the legacy from time to time, and I'm literally just like, what is happening? <laughs> the legacy, I'm angers and keyboard, I'm jazz. Yeah, no, I haven't watched the legacy, but I don't know. I feel like Generations is one of those shows that you compare with, what like backstage with Seven Delan, Isting, or those long standing. Okay, you would rather then have a limited edition. Kind of thing. Yeah, because I feel like the, the Guzlams and the Chachas and all those are, are limited edition and they, they have a specific purpose. Whereas Soapies, there's ne there's never an end. It kind of just keeps going and going and going for years. And, and then, like, the idea well, or the hey, purpose, not changes. Never an end. purpose changes. Not forever. Not forever, but they, they go for very long. There's never, like, we're only getting 16 episodes. It's like, you're getting the year and then another year and so then another year. The year. Okay, then then another then, year, so then, then that means year. that we can wrap it up with the ones that we have. There. <laughs> um... If, if, do you guys want to see all of these? Because I was going to ask you, of all of these, which one was your favorite and which one would you want to see on a streaming platform? It's a toss-up between Yuzo Yuzo and Home Affairs. Yeah, I think I want to see Home Affairs. I don't know, Yuzo Yuzo for me is a classic and I really do want to rewatch it. Um, although some of the episodes are on YouTube. But um, I do feel like Home Affairs will make more of an impact to today's people whereas yuzo yuzo touches on things that are still impact that are still relevant now but it feels very 90s whereas home affairs has a lot of things that are still unfortunately issues now that i think would be really impactful to rewatch. you know what i feel like we also just didn't touch on is like the actors on these shows like they're really 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 good Listen, we have talent when it comes to acting. I, I should. Like, just imagine having a fucking, like, they're stars now. Maybe they might have not been stars then. But just to have a full cast of, like, at, like, just the top, at the best, at the, like. But can I tell you, though, sometimes, eh, having, or having really great actors all at the stars. same time doesn't always come out great. No, I'm not saying that it guarantees a good show. I'm, I am saying that they were all good like i i, I, I i'm not i'm not yeah. like they're all really really good this was a great conversation i think I, I feel like it was a great kickstarter but i think at the end of the day what makes it difficult for us to propel the chats we aren't in the industry um yeah. and so unfortunately we're unable we to hit to on we yeah, we, we need to be able to propel this chat to be able to take it to the next level where it comes from people who are informed because like we always say like we don't know everything. We're not the experts in the field, but we speak as the people who are observing the show. We're just like you. We're also the viewers. But I think what will make this chat even more compelling is to bring in, let's say, like a Warren, to bring in a Chesty, to bring in Sunny Faba, to bring in all the people who are here and to say, yo, listen, 
give them give them this link and to be like please watch this episode challenge us and if we said some wrong shit come on and let's like actually have this chat like what did we you know um so yeah i like that i like that idea i would like literally cry if we had somebody like um 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 fatiswa or like brenda on the show that like, that would be fucking amazing uh just for them to turn in terms of like talking about like um not uh where they are now uh but just like what did that show mean for them and then like now the kind of roles that they like take or accept or um what kind of roles are they looking forward to because i think in terms of like i've seen a conversation like that ooh, mom angela bassett once had and she was talking about how you know she wishes she wishes she could be cast for like different types of things because a lot of the time she feels like sometimes um you know the older you get or whatever you start getting typecast or if you really excel in one type of role you get typecast you, as you'll see we had a rigorous vigorous you know conversation um um but you know I, as you know the conversation never ends here so be sure to comment down below uh drop us your uh, thoughts uh engage in the conversation um give us m new examples of you know who you would like to see as robisha mentioned if you know we p possibly could have a conversation with them um give us new things that you maybe would like us to actually talk about if there's a game you want us to do you know drop us drop us some recommendations man don't forget to yeah. do the most important things like share comment watch and subscribe just so you guys know now that i can't hear you so i'm just gonna sit here and look like i can hear you <laughs> guys they're literally speaking without me and i can't hear a damn thing <laughs> i'm literally sitting here like what are they even talking about